everyone welcome to another video in this one we're going to talk about a snow shader with unity shader graph unlike the earlier tutorials we're going to introduce a little new concept which is custom functions which i'll come in a moment um, but before that I'll, i'd like to talk about what we're going to do with the snow shader so unlike triple under shaders which like show a snow effect on normal materials this shader is responsible for deforming the actual ground or let's say the terrain well terrain is not particularly supported to keep that video simple um, but you can use custom meshes uh, the only constraint is you need to have very dense mesh what i mean by that is you need to subdivide the mesh and have enough vertices in order to perform a smooth deformation otherwise the deformation might look not appropriate enough so to do that i'll provide a sample mesh to you which is a plain mesh i subdivide it in blender but you can do that with your custom meshes or your custom exported terrain meshes too it, it works right off the bat and along with that we we're going to introduce render textures in this video so we're going to use render textures blip them uh, with our deformation trails and then feed it into our shader and our shader will be responsible for getting that pixels this deformation trail pixels and deform the vertices uh, according to the mapping which we will use custom function in that point anyway without further ado let's jump to the tutorial and see how it works we can start by creating a new pbr graph and name it as snow shader now first things first we need to have a trail texture to do so we can create the new expose property and name it as trail map as follows after dragging that property into canvas we need to create a custom function this will be the first time that we are gonna use a custom function in this channel so better be explaining what it does and why we need it for. So a custom function is a code snippet. So it is, it is capable of performing shader code operations uh, without writing the entire shader by yourself. We need to write a piece of code to make things easier for us. It is also supported by other shader visual editors like in Unreal Blueprints or I believe Amplify supports it. I'm not quite sure, but we have it in the shader graph. So um, we are capable of not using it, uh, but if we don't use it, we're gonna need to create at least uh, 80 nodes to perform that operation instead of using a for loop. So we're gonna use this custom function, write a bit of code, which I will explain what it does and how it performs the operation. And the, the reason, that we're going to need that code is to sample our um, deformation map and um, then use it to deform the vertices all around the target vertex what i mean by that is you're going to have a vertex here and you want to blur the deformation to not to just deform this one and provide like create some sort of weird artifact so you're going to want to blur it at all the neighbor vertices and it is possible to do that with just you know getting the getting a for loop and accessing to the earlier vertex and the following vertex and then distorting them um you know having a curve kind of a distortion to make it more smooth so that's what we're going to do with this uh, shader snippet so let's go back and see how we're going to do that back to the canvas we need to set up a few parameters using input and output fields of this custom shader code function. First and foremost, we need to provide our trail map into here. Then we're gonna pass UV coordinates and call it as texture chord. As the third, we need to have a vector one called blur size, which I'll explain in a moment. Then as fourth and fifth parameters, we need a sampler state and the height multiplier vector one variables. And as the output, we need to spit out the modified height value. I'll call it as height pause. Then I'll convert code type to string and name this function as calculate height. As I mentioned before, 
This is actually a shader code snippet, which will make things easier for us. While coding, we got to define a float parameter as mean height. Then in a nested for loop from minus one to positive one, we will add up to this mean height. So to actually add a value, we're going to call sample texture 2D LOD macro and pass trail map as the first parameter to sample our map. Then we're going to pass sampler state as the second parameter. As the third parameter, we need to pass UV chords as a float 2. In there, we're going to pass text chord X plus I times blur size in order to blur that coordinate in trail map with our smoothing radius. As the Y value, we got to do the same thing with Y value and J variable. As the fourth variable, we're going to pass an LOD value. Although we don't need any level of detail, so I'll just pass one. As a side note in that point, this macro will return a four dimensional value, but we need only the red channel of the texture. So I'll get rid of the other channels and only use the red channel with typing dot red. So as the final thing, we're going to need to return our mean height into height pause variable with some adjustment. But before that, it seems like our sampler variable caused some trouble. So I'll simply rename it as SS. Then back to our height pause equation, I need to divide mean height by total sample count, which is nine. After doing that, we need to clamp that mean value between zero and one to have deterministic results. So Unity has a special shader function called saturate to clamp your value between zero and one. Then I'll multiply this decimal number via our height multiplier to control the total height. Cool, that's about it. This is all the shader code that we gotta write. Rest of it will be good old shader graph fun. Okay, now we can pass inputs as nodes. First of all, as the texture chord, I'll pass UV into it. Then as the blur size, I need to create a new exposed property and name it as trail radius. After that, I'll divide this vector one by 100 and connect it into the blur size. Next, we will pass sampler state to input SS. And finally, I'll expose another variable for height multiplier. But before connecting it, we're gonna divide this by a thousand. Reason of these division operation is to have non-exaggerated deformation visuals. Otherwise, deformed surface would look way too off. Great, now this function will give us a distortion on Y axis of a vertex for deforming the ground by snow, but we can't directly use this variable because we just have an absolute height value it has nothing to do with the actual vertex position. To do so, I'll use a position node with an object space. Then I'll split this value into its vector components and combine it back. But before combining the G value back, I'll subtract our deformation height from Y position of that vertex. Rest of the elements of that vertex can remain as it was since we're only interested with distorting our snow vertically. Finally, if we connect this combined node to vertex position input of PBR master node, we should be good to go. Now, let me quickly assign this shader into a material and attach my test trail texture into it and drag the material to my plane. Finally, I'll tweak radius and height multiplier values to observe the distortion. As you can see, we have a smooth distortion now, but also our plain texturing looks pretty nasty. To use actual snow textures and normal maps, we gotta go back into shader graph. Now, we need to create a trail texture and the main texture in order to have two separate textures for deformed and non-deformed snow surfaces. After exposing texture properties, I sample them as follows. Additionally, I have a trail color tint value to slightly tint the trail color from outside of the shader graph. Then I just lerp main texture with trail texture. By the way, we also need to sample our trail map too. As you can see, 
it is pretty much the same thing, except I discard alpha value via combine node since we don't need alpha value. Then I'll add a clamp node to control texture blending and use our blending factor as the T input. Also, I gotta have a trail blending gap property and hook into max input of clamp in order to actually control the blending from outside. Now we can connect this to albedo of PBR and go back to our scene. So I'll pass the necessary snow texture into my material and tweak color and blending cap values. As you can see, we have a better result in hand now, but that's not enough. If you wanna render snow, you should better be using normal maps and make it look cool. To do so, back in our shader graph, I'll add two more texture for our normal maps and sample them too. Additionally, since these are normal maps, I can't use them like a color value. I need to unpack normals with normal unpack node. After that, I'll add a tiling variable to control normal map tiling and assign this into a tiling and offset node. Then pass it into my samplers. Finally, I'll lerp them together as I did for main textures, then connect this to the normal input of the PBR. Back in the scene, if I pass these normal maps into my material, boom, now we're talking. But we can do better, right? Let's quickly add a gloss variable to make it literally shine. Then I'll lerp them the same way and connect this into smoothness input of PBR. Now we can control its reflection glossiness rate. As a follow up, I'll adjust my scene lighting a bit and we have a pretty cool looking deformed snow shader. Now the question is, how are we gonna distort this in runtime? To do so, we're gonna play with some smoke and magic. I'll create a particle system at the bottom of my deformation cube and start configuring the particle system. So if you're gonna deform something with your objects, you're probably gonna need to create separate particle systems or use some sort of mesh emission to actually spawn particles. Now, while I'm configuring the particle system, you can find necessary variables on the screen. One thing that we need to do now is creating a smooth fade out particle material. We can create a new material and set its shader to legacy particle additive soft, then pass built in unity particle texture into it. After assigning this material into our render material slot, I'll tweak min and max particle sizes as 0.3. You can increase this value by 0.5 depending on your uh, object size, whatever. Now, if you do that, and if you do it right, you will see that our particle system leave trail behind it. Great. Now, to actually use this trail information, we're gonna write it into a render texture. But to do that, we're gonna need a second camera. Okay. We need this camera to only render our particle system so that it doesn't freak out and draw irrelevant trails everywhere. To do that, I'll go ahead and create a layer and set this layer to calling mask of my camera. Then I'll change camera projection to orthographic and tweak the size and clipping plane values as follows. Then I reposition the camera to let it see the particle system properly. Now, we can hook a render texture into our second camera. Let's create a new render texture, set size as 1024. Then since we just used the red channel, I'll change its color format to R16 as float. It is for 16 bit red channel assigned float, but you know, we call it like this. Then attach the render texture to camera and also put the render texture into your material scene instance. After doing that, you can see a dynamic deformation. Also, since our particle dissolve by time, our snow trails fill up too. If you don't want them to fill up by the time, you can play with the particle system's lifetime to remove this fill up effect. With that, we have successfully created a snow deformation shader. Congratulations. All right, that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. And I hope you can achieve great distortions, snowy environments. Let me know what you're gonna do with this shader. 
And if you like this video, um, you can press the like button. And if you want to share this video with your friends on your Discord channels, then you're free to do that. Also, um, please leave a comment in the comment section below to let me know about what you do with this one, how it helps. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you guys are making awesome comments and you know watching the videos. It, it is really a good motivation for me. And until next time, see you.